If you want to be productive with Flutter, one of the first things you should master is layouts. In today's video, I'll show you the core principles for aligning and positioning widgets. And if you're a web developer, I'll be making direct comparisons to CSS because the two share a lot more similarities than you might realize. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can grab the full source code from Fireship.io. And I'll be giving away another t-shirt with this video. All you have to do is leave a comment below letting me know what you want to see next. The first thing we'll look at is individual widget positioning, which is the equivalent to a div in HTML with a CSS class applied to it. From there, we'll look at how to lay out widgets in columns and rows, which works in the same way that Flexbox does in CSS. And lastly, we'll look at how to stack widgets on top of each other, which is similar to absolute or fixed positioning in CSS. Let's go ahead and jump into the code, and you'll see that I'm starting out here with a scaffold, which basically gives us a blank palette to work with. Then as the body, I'm defining a container that has a red border. That'll make it easy to visualize how child elements fit within their parent container. Then I've created a widget called square, which just has a fixed width and height, and we can pass in an argument to adjust the size or the color of the square. This just gives us something to work with as we start aligning multiple items. And quick side note, you'll notice I'm using font awesome icons, highly recommended if you get bored with the default material icons. And then lastly, we have a widget called Demo, which we'll get to when we start doing things with Flexbox and Absolute Positioning. For now, let's go back up to the root container that we define in the body. You'll see that it's sitting in the top left corner of the view. A container is a lot like a span or a div in HTML, in the sense that it's just an empty piece of UI that you can apply styles and positioning to. Let's first add some spacing on the outside of this element by setting a margin with edge insets to all sides of 24. And we can increase that a bit to make it a little more clear, but basically it's like putting an invisible border around the entire container. And I'll put the equivalent CSS in the top right corner here. You can also set padding, which will put that invisible spacing on the inside of the element. So you'll notice that the border gets pushed out and now the green background on the container element is visible. You can apply spacing to individual sides by using only instead of all. Another thing you can set on a widget is its alignment. If we set the alignment to center, for example, it will expand the widget out as far as it can go until something tells it to stop. Then it will place the child element directly in the center. The alignment behavior really depends on the parent container. In our case, it's going to expand out until it hits the edge of the screen. There's a couple of other things you can do with containers as well. For example, you can explicitly set the width and the height. That's exactly what I've done to create this square box in the middle. And you can also apply a transform to a container. That could be a whole video on its own, but you can do the same things you can do in CSS like rotate, skew, and scale. I'd also like to point out that Flutter has a bunch of alternative widgets instead of a container, such as padding and a line. And they're useful because a lot of times you won't need all the functionality of a container. If you only need to apply padding, you can just use the padding widget and that will make your code more focused and readable. Now let's move on to what's probably the most important part of this video, flexible positioning. It allows you to align items in columns and rows, which takes care of the majority of the layouts that you'll see on most mobile apps. For example, if we wanted to rebuild this layout on Duolingo, we would start by defining a column. Then inside this column, we can stack multiple widgets. In this case, we'd start with a text widget, and then we could add a row, and then another row for the buttons at the bottom. Then if you look closely at the middle row, you'll notice we have another column in there that stacks some additional text widgets on top of each other. So basically we can nest columns and rows to build out complex UIs, and we can wrap any of these in their own container to fine tune their individual alignment and positioning. Let's look at some examples. The first thing we'll do is define a row, and it will take an argument of children, which is an array of widgets. In the case of a row, the widgets will flow from left to right horizontally. You'll notice the row takes up as much horizontal space as it possibly can. This is known as the main axis, so in the case of a row, the main axis will be the x-axis. And a column is actually identical to a row, the only difference is the axis is flipped, so the main axis becomes the y-axis. This is identical to how things work with CSS Flexbox. So if you're already comfortable with Flexbox, then you're already going to be comfortable with Flutter positioning just with a few name changes. So if we change our row to a column, you can see that now the items flow from top to bottom and the extra space is along the y-axis. There's really only a couple of options that you need to be familiar with. The first one is main axis size. By default, it will take up the maximum amount of space, but if you set this to min, then you can see that it only goes to the end of the child elements. Most of the actual alignment will be adjusted with the main axis alignment or the cross axis alignment. The main axis is similar to justify content in CSS. And the cross-axis alignment is similar to align items. For example, if we use main axis alignment space between, it will push the children towards the edges and then try to maximize the space in between them. There's a lot of other options like space evenly, which will just maximize the space evenly throughout all the elements. And we can always flip this to a row and you can see the only thing that changes is the axis of alignment. On the cross-axis, the elements will be aligned in the middle by default. It helps if we have squares of different sizes. 
So you can see here that they're all aligned directly in the center, but what if we want these to be aligned at the start of the container? We can make that happen by setting the cross axis alignment to the start of the container. Or if we want to push them to the opposite side, we can set that to end. And one other cool thing you can do with the cross axis is set it to stretch, and that will force the elements to expand across the entire available space. And one other thing I want to point out is that columns and rows are just convenience widgets for the flex widget. If you use a flex widget, you can manually set the direction to either axis horizontal or axis vertical. So at this point, we've been controlling the flex behavior of the children via the parent row or column. But a lot of times you'll need the actual child to define its flex behavior. To demonstrate this, I'm going to give our boxes different colors. And one of the most common use cases is when you have a set of widgets and you want one of those widgets to expand to the available space and have the other widgets just be a fixed size. So for example, we might want our last widget to fill up this available space while keeping the other ones the same size. We can easily do this by wrapping our widget in the expanded widget, and this will tell it to flex to the available space. This is similar to the flex grow property in CSS, and this is actually a ratio that will be calculated based on the other sibling elements next to it. Currently, this is the only expanded widget, so it's just going to fill up all of the available space. But let's go ahead and wrap the middle square in the expanded widget as well. For now, we'll also set its flex property to one, so since they're both set to one, they'll evenly share the available space. But the thing to remember here is that the flex property is a ratio. So if we set flex 10 for the middle element and flex one for the last element, the middle element will take up 10 times more space than the last one. In other words, we could fit 10 pink widgets inside of the blue widget. So Flexbox is awesome when working with two dimensional layouts, but sometimes you want things to overlap as if there was a third dimension to work with. For that, we're going to look at the Flutter stack, and a common use case might be something like a tooltip that gets positioned relative to a button, but on top of the main view. You can compare stacks in Flutter roughly to absolute or fixed positioning in CSS. Let's go ahead and grab our existing column and convert it to a stack. You'll notice that it only displays one square, and that's the red square, which is the last one in the array. The other squares didn't disappear, they're just underneath the red square. The last element in the array gets the highest priority when being displayed. If we make the blue square last, then it's the one that gets displayed when we reload. Now that we have our elements in a stack, we need to align or position them. One way to do that is with the align widget, which allows us to place elements relative to the parent container in a perfect position. So it makes it really easy to center things. And if you don't want to use the align widget, you can just use a container and set the alignment there. When thinking about alignment, the middle is always going to be the zero zero coordinate. And you can control the alignment directly if the built-in static methods aren't enough. For example, if we set it to negative one, negative one, it puts the blue square in the top left corner. And if we were to set it to zero, zero, it would be directly in the middle. But there's generally a better way to position things when you're working within a stack, and that's with the positioned widget. This allows you to define specific values relative to the parent container based on top, bottom, left, right. And one key difference that you'll notice is that positioned won't push the container element to the furthest bounds that it's allowed to go. So in order for position to work, you need to have a container that already has some free space available. So I'm wrapping the stack in a container, and then I'm manually setting the height and width to be the size of the actual device height and width. From there, I'll go down to my positioned widgets and set the top and left properties. And now we can see the parts of the other squares that were hidden before. And now just like absolute position in CSS, we can move these boxes around wherever we want. So using a combination of containers, columns, rows, and stacks will take care of the vast majority of your layout needs in Flutter. Let's go ahead and bring everything together by running through a full example of a card you might build from scratch. There's already a material card built into Flutter, so this is kind of redundant, but it's a good example anyway. So we start with a container, and in that container we'll give it some margin, padding, and we'll also give it a border, and you could also add a box shadow here as well. So basically we're just adding styles to the box that will hold our column. Then in the column itself, we'll have the cross axis alignment set to stretch so it expands throughout the entire card. And main axis min will ensure that the column only expands to the content and not to the end of the viewport. Now if we add children to this container, they'll be stretched out across the horizontal axis. And that's how we get this purple rectangle here. And I didn't really talk about text in this video, but they have their own specific text styles that are also very similar to CSS. Now because we're inside of a column, these text widgets will be stacked on top of each other. The next thing we'll do is create another container, and the child of this container will be a row. We want to display three buttons horizontally, and we want the first button to be at the very left and the last button to be at the very right. So for that, we can use main axis alignment, space between. Then we'll just go ahead and drop a few of Flutter's built-in buttons into this array, and they'll be perfectly spaced along the horizontal axis. 
So as you can see, once you're comfortable with Flexbox, it becomes very easy to prototype out UIs, and most of your layout should be responsive and be able to adapt to different viewport sizes. In future videos, I'd like to clone popular mobile app UIs like maybe Lyft or Instagram, or maybe even Snapchat's redesign that everybody hates. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. Look forward to more Flutter videos. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.